Hello friends, this is Grief speaking. Today we're diving into the found footage iceberg. I think found footage is interesting because on one hand, it's the genre known for producing some of the most hot garbage horror films. But on the other hand, it's given room for small creators to tell their stories on a shoestring budget. So that's why I thought it'd be nice to take on this iceberg chart. I know there are some found footage hidden gems out there and I wanna find them. If you enjoy my work, consider supporting me on Patreon. But without further ado, this is the found footage iceberg. Tier 1, starting with Cloverfield. Cloverfield is one of my favorite found footage movies and one of my favorite monster movies. It's really a classic kaiju movie story-wise, not much different than something like Godzilla, with a mysterious giant monster showing up and destroying New York City. The twist is that it's from the first person perspective of the people running in terror as opposed to following the monster itself, perfectly utilizing the found footage style. It follows a group of people throwing a going away party when suddenly the monster shows up. The first person perspective works really well in a movie like this because everything is at scale. Seeing the monster towering in the background is chilling, and I like that because the viewpoint is limited and the monster keeps its mystique. It really keeps you engaged because you just want to catch another glimpse of the thing. I don't want to spend too much time on it because this is only the first entry, but in the oversaturated found footage market, this one always stands out for finding a great way to utilize the style. The Blair Witch Project Everyone knows Blair Witch since it is probably the most famous found footage movie of all time, catapulting the genre into the mainstream. But I feel I should give it some attention since it really is the catalyst for the influx of found footage films that followed. The original film followed three student filmmakers as they investigated the legend of the Blair Witch that dates back to the 18th century involving a woman named Ellie Kedward who was accused of witchcraft in 1785. The townsfolk banished her to the Black Hills Forest where she supposedly died from exposure over the years. There are numerous unexplained disappearances and and strange occurrences in the area, which locals attribute to the curse of the Blair Witch. As the trio delve deeper into the forest, they encounter increasingly strange and terrifying events, including mysterious symbols and unsettling noises. The group becomes hopelessly lost, and tensions rise as their fear escalates. I think modern viewers watching this for the first time may feel very underwhelmed. I know I did the first time I watched it, mostly because there aren't a ton of outright scares, but mostly tension building up to the end of the movie. But you have to remember that when this was first released, many people thought it was real. I've come to appreciate it for what it is, and if you get yourself in the right mindset, it can still be pretty freaky, especially that ending. In 2016, there was a sort of sequel reboot simply titled Blair Witch. This one is a direct sequel to the original when the sister of one of the original filmmakers wants to investigate what happened. While it did have some terrifying moments, it just didn't hold water to the phenomenon of the original film. Paranormal Activity Possibly the second most popular found footage film series is Paranormal Activity. It took the concept of a haunted house movie and used the found footage style to make it much more real. The original film follows a young couple, Katie and Micah, who move into a new home and begin experiencing paranormal activity. Damn it, they got me to say it. Anyway, Katie says she's experienced these issues since she was a kid. So Micah sets up a camera in their home to capture evidence of what they believe is a haunting. As the recordings progress, they experience increasingly terrifying supernatural events linked to a demon that has been following Katie since her childhood. This movie sets the basis for the series lore and the franchise went on to have six sequels, all following the same style and premise. What we do in the shadows. I was focusing on horror found footage for this iceberg, but I had to include this one because it is technically horror even if it's not scary scary at all. It's a documentary following a group of vampire roommates in their day-to-day -day lives. It's one of my favorite films of all time and I think one of the funniest movies in the last decade. The documentary interview style works really well for comedy and although it's very slapstick, the movie actually stays true to vampire lore and has a ton of references to other vampire films. Like how their oldest roommate who just stays in a coffin in the basement looks exactly like Nosferatu from the 1922 film. If you're a horror fan, especially of classic vampire movies and want a good laugh, check this one out. Rex slash quarantine series. Okay, I'm primarily going to focus on the original 2007 Rec movie, but I'll touch the entire series here. Rec is a Spanish found footage horror film that follows Angela, a television reporter, and her cameraman Pablo, who are covering a routine night shift at a local fire station for a documentary. Their night takes a terrifying turn when they accompany firefighters to an emergency call at a small apartment building in Barcelona. Upon their arrival, they find police and emergency workers attending an elderly woman who suddenly becomes aggressively violent. The building is then quickly quarantined by authorities trapping the residents, Angela and Pablo, inside. From there, the situation only escalates, and it becomes clear that a horrifying virus is turning residents into vicious, zombie-like creatures. The film is excellent at tension building as the group tries to survive, uncovering a secret in the building's penthouse, which holds the key to the outbreak. This is where the movie takes a slightly supernatural turn, as the virus seems to be connected to demonic possession. It's widely considered one of the best found footage horror films, and I would agree. One of the most terrifying scenes in any 
found footage horror movie is the climax of Wreck, shot in night vision as Pablo and Angelo encounter a long infected and grotesque girl who begins to hunt them down. I'm not trying to spoil the scare here, but I wanted to talk about it because this is not CGI. It's all practical effects and thank God because I think this girl is one of the scariest things I've seen in found footage. So the series continues as the virus begins to break out everywhere, essentially leading to a zombie demon apocalypse, but generally keeping to the same style. So Quarantine is actually just an American remake of Wreck and it mirrors it pretty closely other than a couple of character and setting changes. I'd say if you're only going to watch one, watch Wreck over Quarantine. I think it's done a little better and the climax is much scarier, but that's my own personal taste. The Visit. The Visit is a psychological horror film written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, I kind of remember when this came out and people were shocked that M. Night made a well-regarded movie. He really is the hit and miss king. But anyway, it of course employs a found footage style told through the lens of a documentary being made by two young siblings, Becca and Tyler, who are visiting their grandparents for the first time. Although the grandparents exhibit increasingly bizarre and disturbing behavior, especially after dark, which the children are told is due to a condition called sundowning, a form of dementia. As the visit progresses, the siblings discover deeply unsettling secrets about their grandparents and as with most M. Night Shyamalan movies, has a big and interesting twist. Although there are some really freaky moments in this movie, the grandparents' bizarre behavior is actually pretty funny at times, making this part horror and part dark comedy. As above, so below. As Above So Below is set in the catacombs beneath Paris and follows Scarlet, a young alchemist and scholar who is obsessed with finding the legendary philosopher's stone, which is believed to grant eternal life and turn any metal into gold. Accompanied by a documentary filmmaker, Benji, and a group of explorers, including her friend George and a group of local guides, Scarlet ventures into the uncharted depths of the catacombs. As the team delves deeper, they encounter a series of cryptic puzzles and historical clues that Scarlet interprets, leading them further into the catacombs. However, the journey quickly turns into a nightmare as they face their personal demons and traumas which are physically manifested in horrifying and surreal ways within the catacombs labyrinth tunnels. I think this movie stands out a bit in this genre for its adventure element. There's definitely some Tomb Raider vibes going on and the exploration aspect is pretty cool. I think the standout horror in the film is actually claustrophobia as the crew is forced to crawl through really small spaces and there's one scene in particular where a character is stuck and just freaking the hell out. It's brilliantly suspenseful especially if you have a fear of tight spaces. The fourth kind. The fourth kind sort of stands out on this list because it's not entirely found footage. It uses a unique narrative structure claiming to present real archived footage alongside dramatized scenes. So while there are some found footage elements, most of the film is shot traditionally. The story revolves around Abigail Tyler, a psychologist who begins to uncover disturbing evidence of alien abductions while conducting sleep studies on her patients in Alaska. Using hypnotherapy on her patients, she uncovers more evidence of alien encounters, including eerie and unexplainable phenomena during the session such as patients speaking an ancient Sumerian language and levitating off the bed. So the fourth kind claims to intersperse actual footage with the dramatizations, blurring the line between fiction and reality. It seems pretty clear to me that this is all fake, but I don't want to start any alien debates here. I will say I remember watching this alone in the dark on my laptop one night and being pretty freaked out, especially by a woman at the end that is supposedly the real Dr. Tyler. Her performance is really creepy. Unfriended, otherwise known as friend request, this revolves around a group of high school friends who are haunted by a mysterious figure while on a Skype call. The entity seeks revenge for a shaming video that led to a girl named Laura Barnes committing suicide. The friends are then slowly picked off in the fashion of a slasher movie, except for the fact that the entire story, except for the fact that the entire story unfolds on a computer screen. And this is the whole gimmick of the movie. Honestly, this one just isn't my cup of cooties. But I do respect it. It's a good idea and done very well for what it is. Europa Report. So this one flew right past my radar and I only discovered it from this iceberg, which is embarrassing since we're still only on tier one. It follows the crew on a manned mission to Jupiter's moon, Europa, in search of extraterrestrial life, with the story unfolding through the crew's video logs and data. While much of the movie is more of a sci-fi thriller as the crew must deal with a series of problems in flight, there is a little bit of cosmic horror as the film culminates in a tense and mysterious encounter with an unknown life form. The VHS series. The VHS series is up there with paranormal activity as far as sequels go, with six main entries, two spin-offs, and another sequel on the way. Each film is an anthology with some sort of framing narrative going on in between. For instance, the first film revolves around a group of petty criminals tasked with breaking into a house to retrieve a mysterious VHS tape. As they search through the tapes, they watch various horrifying and supernatural events captured on video, each tape presenting a different horror story. 
story. Because there are so many movies and therefore dozens of stories, it would take me forever to go through all of them. Maybe I'll do an entire video on the series at some point, but for now, I'll leave it at that. Grave Encounters. Grave Encounters revolves around the crew of a paranormal reality television show called Grave Encounters as they lock themselves inside the abandoned Collingwood Psychiatric Hospital for a night to investigate reports of supernatural phenomena for their show. The hospital has a dark history, including unethical treatments and unexplained patient deaths, making it a prime location for their ghost hunting episode. It's clearly a knock on shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures, but if they actually found something. As the night progresses, the crew experiences increasingly horrifying events. They encounter ghostly apparitions, face personal demons, and struggle with mental disorientation. While there are the classic jump scares you'd expect and actual run-ins with apparitions, the better horror here is the atmosphere of the hospital itself, seemingly taking on a life of its own, with hallways that change, doors that lead to nowhere, and time playing by its own rules. In this way, it reminds me a little of As Above, So Below. Apollo 18 Apollo 18 is framed as a compilation of lost footage from a secret lunar mission, Apollo 18, purportedly launched by NASA in the 1970s, but never publicly acknowledged. The story follows the mission's three astronauts as they embark on what is initially presented as a routine mission to the moon. After landing and setting up their equipment, the astronauts begin experiencing strange occurrences. They discover that a Soviet lunar lander is also on the moon, apparently abandoned. The situation becomes increasingly ominous as they encounter mysterious noises and disturbances both inside and outside their lunar module. As the narrative unfolds, the astronauts uncover the horrifying truth behind the mission. The moon is infested with alien life forms that resemble rocks. This one stands out as pretty unique, I have to say, and it was ambitious to make a found footage horror film set on the moon. Another great find on my end, and we're on tier one, so I'm loving this iceberg so far. All right, we're moving on to tier two, starting with Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust is one of the oldest found footage films, releasing in 1980, and it's considered one of the most disturbing movies ever made. The plot revolves around a rescue mission into the Amazon rainforest to find a missing documentary film crew who had gone there to make a film about indigenous cannibal tribes. The rescue team discovers the crew's lost footage and brings it back to New York. As executives view the recovered footage, the film shifts to the found footage format, showing the horrific events that befell the crew. The film crew is depicted engaging in increasingly unethical and brutal behavior towards the tribe members, including stage scenes of violence to sensationalize their documentary. This provocation ultimately leads to their demise at the hands of the cannibalistic tribes in gruesome detail. So detailed, in fact, that like Blair Witch, a lot of people thought this was a real documentary. But unlike Blair Witch, people were so convinced that it was real that the film's director was initially charged with obscenity and later accused of making a snuff film due to rumors that actors were actually killed on camera. These charges were eventually dropped when the actors themselves showed up as witnesses. That must be a badge of honor for a horror director, I gotta say. Creep. Creep follows Aaron, a videographer who answers a Craigslist ad to film Joseph for a day. Joseph claims he wants to make a video diary for his unborn son because he has an inoperable brain tumor. As the day progresses, Joseph's behavior becomes increasingly strange and unsettling. Aaron discovers that Joseph's stories are fabrications, leading to a tense game of cat and mouse. The film takes a minimalist approach, starring only the two characters and in their interactions. There's also a bit of humor to it, as Joseph is such a quirky guy, and I actually think that plays into the horror a lot. We've all met people who just give off those unsettling vibes and act strangely in a way that feels off. Well, it's a spoiler, but I think it's kind of obvious where this all leads and it's necessary to explain the sequel, but Joseph is actually a killer and made everything up in order to lure Aaron to him as another victim. Creep 2 picks up directly after the first film, this time following Sarah, an artist and YouTuber who creates videos about lonely men. She responds to an ad posted by Joseph, now calling himself Aaron, who confesses he is a serial killer and proposes she document his life for 24 hours. Intrigued and skeptical, Sarah accepts. Apparently, the writer, Mark Duplass, who actually plays Joseph, ultimately wants to do a trilogy, although it's unclear when or if the third film will ever get made. The Last Exorcism the Last Exorcism focuses on Reverend Cotton Marcus, a skeptical evangelical minister who plans to expose exorcism as a fraud. Inviting a documentary film crew to his last exorcism, he visits the Sweetser family in rural Louisiana, where he encounters their daughter Nell, believed to be possessed. Initially performing a staged exorcism, Marcus is soon confronted with unsettling and seemingly supernatural events that challenge his disbelief. It clearly takes a lot from The Exorcist, but it's hard not to since that set the standard for these types of movies. The cool thing about this one is that for the majority of the movie, it's unclear whether she is in fact possessed or just suffering from mental illness, and that adds a mystery element to it as well. The Devil Inside The Devil Inside follows Isabella, a young woman who seeks to understand what happened to her mother, Maria, who was committed to a mental hospital in Italy after murdering three people during her
her own exorcism. Isabella travels to Italy with a documentary filmmaker to visit her mother and explore the mysteries of exorcism. As they delve deeper, they encounter two priests who perform exorcisms outside the church's sanction. These priests agree to examine Maria, revealing terrifying evidence of multiple demonic possessions. Not much to say about this one, it's kind of in the same vein as the last exorcism with the same types of scares, although I will say the mother is pretty freaky in this and does a good job of acting and looking psychotic. Diary of the Dead Diary of the Dead is a found footage horror film directed by George Romero, set in the same universe as his earlier Living Dead series, but with a different storyline. The film chronicles the experiences of a group of film students who are making a horror movie in the woods when they learn of a real-world outbreak of the undead. As the zombie apocalypse unfolds, the students decide to document the events with their camera, capturing their desperate journey to find safety and reunite with their families. Man Bites Dog This one I definitely never heard of. Man Bites Dog is a Belgian black comedy mockumentary that delves into the world of a charismatic but psychopathic serial killer, Ben. The film is presented as a documentary made by a film crew that follows Ben as he commits a series of increasingly brutal and random murders. The movie blurs the lines between reality and fiction as the film crew becomes more and more complicit in Ben's horrific crimes. Initially, they're just passive observers, but as the film progresses, they find themselves assisting in the murders. This movie was and is obviously controversial because of the fact that murder, among other violent crimes, is presented in such a comical fashion, and the film was banned in some countries. Obviously, this level of dark humor is not appreciated by everyone, but I just have to say, I found myself laughing within the first couple of minutes as Ben drops a body bag off a bridge. The Taking of Deborah Logan This film follows Mia, a documentary filmmaker, and her crew who set out to make a film about Alzheimer's disease, focusing on an elderly woman, Deborah Long, and her daughter, Sarah. As they begin filming, Deborah's condition appears to be typical Alzheimer's, but soon strange occurrences suggest something weird's going on. Deborah's behavior becomes increasingly erratic and disturbing, with unexplainable events happening around the house at the same time Mia and her team uncover dark secrets from Deborah's past, including a connection to a series of unsolved murders and occult practices. Obviously, making a horror movie around Alzheimer's is hard to do respectfully, but I also think it's a great starting point before it moves into the supernatural stuff. I do want to mention that this is one of the more legitimately scary found footage movies, and there are some scenes in this that definitely rival the ending scene in Wreck. The Bay Set in the small seaside town of Claridge, Maryland, The Bay is presented as a compilation of various digital recordings, including news footage, Skype calls, and personal videos, piecing together the horrifying events that took place on July 4th, 2009. The story revolves around an ecological disaster that unfolds when the water in Chesapeake Bay becomes infested with a mutant parasitic isopod, a byproduct of pollution and toxic chemicals dumped into the bay. These parasites, mutated versions of tongue-eating lice, start infecting the town's residents during their annual Independence Day celebrations, leading to gruesome and horrific consequences. The situation escalates quickly as the town's residents succumb to the parasites, which eat them from the inside out, causing grotesque and deadly symptoms. In a way, it reminds me of Body Melt, a movie about a group of people taking experimental vitamins that cause them to die in horrible ways. And in that way, it seems like this one actually works as a body horror film as well. Devil's Pass Devil's Pass is a found footage horror film that delves into the real-life mystery of the Dilatov Pass incident where nine Russian hikers mysteriously died in the Ural Mountains in 1959. The story follows a group of five American college students who embark on an expedition to retrace the steps of the original group, hoping to uncover the truth behind the unexplained deaths. And as they venture deeper into the snowy mountains, strange and unexplainable events begin to occur, including eerie noises and inexplicable footprints in the snow. The group discovers a Russian military experiment and evidence of a potential cover-up involving teleportation and mutated creatures. The Pyramid Set in Egypt, the story revolves around a team of American archaeologists who discover a lost pyramid buried beneath the desert. Excited by the prospect of uncovering new historical secrets, the team, led by a father-daughter duo, along with a documentary crew, decide to explore the pyramid's interior. Once inside, the team quickly realizes that the pyramid is a labyrinth structure filled with dead ends and traps. They encounter various hazards, including toxic air and collapsing floors, which which impede their progress and cause injuries. As they get deeper, it becomes clear that they are not alone. The pyramid houses an ancient entity that begins to stalk out and attack the members of the expedition. Afflicted 
Afflicted is a found footage horror film that blends elements of the vampire myth with a travel adventure narrative. The story follows two best friends, Derek and Cliff, who embark on a year-long journey around the world with plans to document their trip on a blog for their friends and family. Early in their travels, in Paris, Derek has a romantic encounter that goes awry, and he soon begins experiencing strange symptoms. As they continue their journey, Derek's condition rapidly deteriorates as he develops hypersensitivity to sunlight, superhuman strength, and a thirst for blood. Cliff, documenting the changes, tries to help Derek understand stand and cope with his new abilities and affliction, which increasingly point towards vampirism. It's an interesting use of the found footage genre, and the fact that the friends are trying to work this out together as Derek continues to change is great. This all culminates into a legit horror movie experience by the end. One Cut of the Dead I'm glad I saw this one on the chart because I watched this movie a couple years ago and I can honestly say it's one of my favorite films from the last decade. Although it's hard to get into it without spoiling the whole thing, so honestly I'd recommend just watching it blind, but I'll just say if you can make it through the first 20 minutes of this one, you'll be glad you watched the entire film. It's sort of a found footage zombie movie, all done in one take, and sort of not, but it's very original, so just go watch it. Lake Mungo Lake Mungo unfolds in a documentary style format and revolves around the Palmer family who are grappling with the drowning death of their daughter Alice. As they mourn, strange events begin to occur, suggesting that Alice's spirit might be haunting their home. The family discovers secret videotapes made by Alice, revealing her experiences with supernatural occurrences and a foreboding premonition of her own death. Lake Mungo is one of the most revered found footage films on the chart, and almost everyone considers it highly underrated, not just for some bone-chilling scares, but that there's really a heart-wrenching story underneath it all, not to mention one of the most effective jump scares on the list. The Tunnel Set in the underground network of abandoned railway tunnels beneath Sydney, the story falls a news crew investigating a government cover-up regarding water shortages in the city. The tunnels are a common place for the homeless population to find shelter until a number of them go missing. As journalist Natasha Warner and her team dive deeper into the tunnels, they encounter several obstacles, but their main problem is the fact that they're not alone and that some kind of creature is stalking them. The Gallows the Gallows is set in a small town high school where a group of students decide to resurrect a failed stage production called The Gallows that led to the accidental hanging and death of a student two decades earlier. As the students stay after hours to prepare for their production, they find themselves trapped inside the school, with the vengeful spirit of the kid who died in the original play now stalking them. Moving on to Tier 3, starting with... The Sacrament. The Sacrament is inspired by the real-life events of the Jonestown Massacre of 1978. It follows two journalists, Sam and Jake, who work for Vice Media, and their photographer friend Patrick. They travel to an undisclosed location outside of the United States to find Patrick's sister, Caroline, who has joined a mysterious religious commune known as Eden Parish. Upon their arrival, they are initially charmed by the seemingly idyllic community and its charismatic leader known only as Father. However, it becomes clear that something fishy is going on. They find the Eden Parish is not the paradise it appears to be, and that its residents live under the strict and oppressive control of Father. Things begin to rapidly escalate when the journalists start to uncover the dark and violent underpinnings of the commune, leading to a mass suicide event of the commune's members. The film captures the chaos and horror of the event as the journalists desperately try to escape with their lives and document the tragedy. The Poughkeepsie Tapes The Poughkeepsie Tapes is presented as a documentary piecing together the crimes of a serial killer known as the Poughkeepsie Killer. This is done through a collection of tapes found in an abandoned house in Poughkeepsie, New York. The story is a disturbing chronicle of the killer's decades-long spree, with tapes revealing his methods of abduction, torture, and murder. The film combines interviews with fictional law enforcement, victims' families, and forensic experts, alongside the footage from the killer's tapes. A particularly creepy aspect of the story is the killer's manipulation and prolonged torment of one of his surviving victims, Cheryl Dempsey. Her ordeal and psychological breakdown are central to the narrative, showcasing the long-term effects of the killer's actions. And while there are a lot of standout scenes in the movie that are really terrifying, it's really the way he interacts with Cheryl that is the most disturbing part to me. The killer often wears masks and strange outfits, and he eventually makes Cheryl wear a mask as well. He makes her call herself Slave, and she eventually becomes completely submissive to him. Really dark stuff. Devils Do Devil's Due is a film about a newlywed couple who are expecting a child when strange things begin happening concerning the pregnancy. The film begins with the couple's wedding and follows them on their honeymoon in the Dominican Republic. One night after a mysterious encounter with a fortune teller, they lose consciousness and wake up with no memory of the night before. Soon after returning home, Samantha discovers she's pregnant. As the pregnancy progresses, however, it becomes clear that something is very, very wrong. Samantha starts to exhibit strange and violent behavior, and unexplained phenomenon occur around her. Zach 
Jack, increasingly concerned, begins to document these events with his camera. He discovers that their encounter on the honeymoon night was part of a sinister ritual and that the pregnancy is somehow linked to a satanic cult. The film escalates as Samantha's condition worsens and she approaches giving birth. I have to say, this is a cool concept, and although it does have a lot of similar tropes and imagery of other exorcism films, the fact that she's not really possessed but instead pregnant with a demon is a cool twist on the genre. The Den the Den centers around Elizabeth, a graduate student conducting a study on the habits of webcam chat users on a site called The Den. It kind of starts off feeling like Omegle the movie, and eventually Elizabeth's research takes a dark turn when she witnesses what appears to be a real murder on the site. However, Elizabeth becomes increasingly entangled in the world behind the site. She finds herself targeted by a mysterious hacker who begins to take over her digital life, leading to terrifying real-world consequences. As she continues the investigation, she uncovers a horrifying network of violence and voice surrounding the site. So yeah, it is Omegle. Open Windows Open Windows is a techno thriller that unfolds entirely through computer screens and webcams. The story centers on Nick Chambers, a fan who wins a contest to meet actress Jill Goddard. However, he's drawn into a twisted plot by a man who claims to be Jill's campaign manager. Nick is coerced into a cyber stalking game where he's forced to spy on Jill through his computer. Area 51 Area 51 is about three friends, Reed, Darren, and Ben, who become obsessed with uncovering the secrets of Area 51. The trio embarks on an illegal venture to infiltrate the heavily guarded base. The film documents their meticulous planning and preparation, which includes gathering intelligence and equipment needed to bypass security, like pills that mask their ammonia levels and bodysuits that don't give off a heat signature. As they get deeper into the restricted zone, they encounter increasingly bizarre and terrifying events, and eventually find themselves in the underground levels of the facility where they discover bizarre and unsettling alien technology and evidence of a real extraterrestrial presence. Hell House LLC the Hell House LLC series is a collection of found footage horror films centered around the Abaddon Hotel, a site of unexplained tragedy and supernatural horror. The series begins with a Halloween haunted house attraction gone horrifically wrong, leading to multiple deaths. As the series progresses through its sequels, various groups including a journalist, a documentary crew, and an entrepreneur are drawn to the hotel, each uncovering deeper layers of its dark history and the malevolent forces at play. Ratter. The film centers around Emma, a young woman who moves to New York City for college. Unbeknownst to her, a cyberstalker has hacked into all of her personal electronic devices, tracking her every move. Emma begins to sense that she's being watched and experiences a series of disturbing incidents, but she can't pinpoint the source. The film escalates as the stalker's actions become more intrusive and threatening. Noroi Fans of Japanese horror films may know this one, but it's surprisingly underrated and stands out to me in the found footage genre. A lot of this has to do with great acting, which makes it really feel like you're watching a documentary. The idea is that a paranormal investigator is making a documentary called The Curse. He ends up disappearing after his house is burned down and his wife is found dead in the ruins. This is all explained in the introduction before said documentary even begins to play. It's a really well done film for such a low budget and has some really disturbing moments, like a boy beating his head with a rock before becoming possessed and several rituals that require human fetuses to complete. The Conspiracy the Conspiracy is a found footage thriller that dives into the world of conspiracy theories and secret societies. The story follows two documentary filmmakers, Aaron and Jim, who start investigating a conspiracy theorist named Terence G. As they dig deeper into Terence's theories, he mysteriously disappears, prompting them to explore one of his most extreme claims, the existence of a centuries-old secret society known as the Tarsus Club. While the movie is fictitious, it pulls from real-world conspiracies and mysterious secret groups like the Bilderberg Group and and Bohemian Grove. The Possession of Michael King this movie centers around Michael King, of course, a documentary filmmaker who, after the tragic death of his wife, decides to make a film debunking the existence of the supernatural. Michael's grief fuels his skepticism, leading him to dive into the darker aspects of the occult, intending to prove that it's all a hoax. He undergoes a series of extreme experiments involving various practitioners of the occult, necromancy, and demonic rituals in an attempt to invite supernatural entities to possess him. However, as his journey progresses, Michael's experience becomes increasingly terrifying and real. He soon realizes that he has unwittingly opened himself up to genuine demonic possession. It's a great premise and many people have pointed out that it's nice to have someone possessed in a movie that's not a teenage girl in a white dress. 
Megan is missing. This one could technically be in the first two tiers because it recently blew up on TikTok, but whatever, we'll stick to the chart. Megan is missing follows the story of two teenage girls, Megan Stewart and Amy Herman, who live in North Hollywood. Megan, a popular high school student, meets a boy online and disappears after arranging to meet him in person. Amy, her best friend, then launches her own investigation to find Megan, but she too falls into the hands of the same predator. The film is notorious for its extremely graphic and unsettling portrayal of abduction, assault, and violence, and has even been banned in New Zealand. It's structured around video diary footage of the girls and simulated online chats, which adds a layer of realism to the narrative. The film ends with a series of disturbing images and videos that are found on the kidnapper's camera, revealing the horrifying fate of both girls. I obviously can't let this one go without mentioning the controversy surrounding the film. It was made on an extremely low budget, and the director had the actors do some pretty intense stuff, including one of the girls being put in an actual torture device, which apparently traumatized her. There's a lot more to it than that, but I don't want to get too derailed from the iceberg. Willow Creek Willow Creek is a found footage horror film directed by Bobcat Goldthwaite. It follows Jim and his girlfriend Kelly, who are on a quest to find the mythical Bigfoot. Jim, a Bigfoot enthusiast, is eager to explore the famous Willow Creek, the site of the original Patterson-Gimley film that purportedly captured Bigfoot on camera in 1967. The couple embarks on a journey through the woods of Northern California, interviewing locals and gathering information about Bigfoot sightings. As they venture deeper into the forest, their initially lighthearted adventure takes a dark turn. They start to experience strange noises and unsettling events in the night, suggesting that something is lurking in the woods with them. It definitely feels a lot like Blair Witch at times, which isn't bad, but at this point in the iceberg, you can see some of the common themes in these movies. Apartment 143 Apartment 143, also known as Emergo, follows a team of parapsychologists as they investigate strange occurrences in an apartment. The story centers on the White family, who have been experiencing unexplained and increasingly disturbing paranormal activity following the death of the mother. They witness a range of unsettling events, including objects moving on their own, mysterious sounds and shadowy figures as well as some straight up possession. Okay, we made it to tier four, starting with Hollow. Hollow is a British found footage film set in the remote countryside that revolves around four friends as they visit the small village of Dunwich. The area is infamous for an ancient ominous tree with a hollow in its trunk, which is at the center of the local superstitions and legends. As the group explores the area, they learn about the tree's disturbing history, which is linked to numerous suicides and a legend about a monk and a nun who were forbidden to marry and allegedly hung themselves from the tree. And of course, strange occurrences begin to happen, particularly around the hollow tree. The Banshee Chapter the story centers around a young journalist, Anne Rowland, who embarks on a journey to uncover the truth behind her friend's disappearance. Her friend James had been experimenting with an undisclosed chemical, DMT-19, derived from a covert government program that explored mind control techniques during the Cold War. Anne's investigation leads her into a dark and terrifying world involving secret government experiments, unsolved mysteries, and unexplained phenomena. She discovers that the DMT-19 drug is linked to bizarre and horrifying side effects, including encounters with otherworldly entities and the unnerving phenomenon known as the Banshee Chapter. The film weaves together actual historical elements such as the MK Ultra program with fictional horror elements. The writer said he was heavily inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's story From Beyond, and I think mixing that concept of other dimensions and otherworldly beings with secret government drugs is a cool idea. Jerusalem. Jerusalem? Jerusalem. This film follows two American tourists, Sarah and Rachel, who travel to Jerusalem for their vacation. Their holiday takes a terrifying turn when biblical prophecies about the apocalypse begin to come true, leading to chaos and destruction in the city. The ancient city's streets become overrun with winged demonic creatures. It's a pretty unique idea set in a unique location, so I gotta give her props for that. The house is October built. Like Hell House LLC, the House is October Built series is a collection of found footage horror films that focus on haunted house attractions and the darker aspects of extreme haunt experiences. The series consists of two films that connect to each other in terms of characters and overarching narrative. The first film introduces a group of friends who are haunted house enthusiasts. The group embarks on a road trip across America in search of the most extreme haunted house attractions. Their journey leads them to seek out the mysterious and elusive Blue Skeleton, an underground haunt known for its intensity and secrecy. As they journey into the world of extreme haunts, they become targeted by the members of the Blue Skeleton Haunt and are abducted. They are then individually tormented and subjected to their worst fears in a series of harrowing scenes that are filmed with head-mounted cameras that the captors force them to wear. Pandemic 
This film is set in a near future where a global pandemic has turned much of humanity into violent, infected, zombie-like beings. The story follows Dr. Lauren Chase, a doctor who has come to Los Angeles to find survivors of the outbreak. Dr. Chase joins a team tasked with finding and rescuing uninfected survivors. The film is presented predominantly from the first-person perspective as the characters wear cameras on their suits, giving the audience a direct view of the action and chaos they encounter. Exists. Exists is a 2014 found footage horror film directed by Eduardo Sanchez, one of the co-directors of the original Blair Witch Project. The film is set in the remote woods of East Texas and follows a group of friends who set out for a fun weekend at a cabin in the forest. Upon reaching the cabin, they begin to experience strange occurrences, including disturbing noises and damage to their vehicle. It becomes evident that they have attracted the attention of a Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Yeah, so earlier we talked about Willow Creek, which is a much lower movie, and in that movie it's actually ambiguous whether it's for sure Bigfoot, as we never really see the creature, but not in this movie, man. Bigfoot is real and he is pissed off. I think this is a standout one on the list to me because it has some great scares and the idea of a huge hulking creature trying to break in and kill you is horrifying. It actually really reminds me of that Bigfoot game on Steam if it were a movie. The Atticus Institute. Yes, this is another possession movie, but this one does have a great setting. The film is set in the early 1970s, and I can't say I've heard of too many found footage movies that take place any earlier than the 80s. It centers around Dr. Henry West, the founder of the Atticus Institute, a small psychology lab conducting experiments in parapsychology. The Institute's focus shifts dramatically with the arrival of Judith Winstead, a patient who displays unprecedented abilities. Of course, Judith's powers attract the attention of the US military, which takes over the Institute under the guise of national security. As the military conducts their experiments on Judith, it becomes clear that her abilities are not just psychic, but demonic, and from there it sort of plays out how you'd expect, except in a lab setting, which is unique. Frankenstein's Army Frankenstein's Army might be the most unique entry in the iceberg. I know we're only halfway through, but this movie is so different from anything else we've covered so far. The film is set towards the end of World War II and follows a group of Russian soldiers on a mission in Germany. That is, until they stumble upon a secret Nazi lab run by a descendant of the infamous Dr. Victor Frankenstein, who's been using his ancestors' research to create horrifying biomechanical soldiers. These creatures, a grotesque blend of human body parts and mechanical implements, are part of a deranged plan to create an unstoppable stoppable army for the Nazis. Now that's my kind of movie. Alien Abduction. Man, talk about a generic name. Well, this movie is inspired by the phenomenon known as the Brown Mountain Lights, a series of supposed UFO sightings near Brown Mountain in North Carolina. The story follows the Morris family, who are on a camping trip in the Brown Mountain area. As the family settles into their vacation, they begin to experience strange occurrences, including bizarre lights and mysterious figures in the night. Their vacation takes a turn, of course, when they encounter actual aliens, and they're hostile. So the family is now being hunted down by aliens. Spree. Spree is a more recent one that I think was swept under the rug a bit since it released in 2020 during the height of the pandemic. The story revolves around Kurt Kunkel, a rideshare driver who is obsessed with social media fame. Kurt, desperate to go viral, devises a deadly plan to gain followers and live streams himself committing a series of murders while working as a driver on an app called Spree. He rigs his car with cameras and begins a killing spree, broadcasting the carnage live on social media. His disturbing stream is initially mistaken for a dark joke, but soon garners attention as viewers realize the horrors are actually real. The film satirizes the modern obsession with social media, and in this regard, it's actually more like a dark comedy with some genuinely funny moments. Final Prayer the Final Prayer, also known as the Borderlands, revolves around a team of Vatican investigators sent to a small English village to look into reports of miraculous occurrences at a local church. They are tasked with investigating the claims of Father Krellick, who asserts that supernatural events are occurring in his church, including strange sounds and apparent divine intervention. As the team delves into the investigation, they encounter increasingly bizarre and frightening phenomena. The church itself seems to be the center of these unexplained events as they discover hidden ancient structures beneath the church. This one initially seems like every other religious horror movie, but it's actually really well regarded by found footage fans and has a surprisingly high review rating online. Phoenix Forgotten Another alien-themed movie, Phoenix Forgotten is loosely inspired by the real-life 1997 Phoenix Lights incident, one of the most famous mass UFO sightings in history. The story is presented as a documentary created by a young woman, Sophie, who is investigating the disappearance of her brother Josh and his two friends who vanished 20 years earlier. The trio had gone to investigate the Phoenix Lights and were never seen again. Sophie's investigation leads her to uncover the footage shot by Josh and his friends on the night they disappeared. As the film progresses, the found footage reveals the teenager's journey into the desert and their increasingly terrifying encounter with an unknown phenomenon. 
Murder Death Koreatown. This is a strange one for a couple of reasons. The story begins after a brutal murder occurs in the Koreatown neighborhood of Los Angeles. The protagonist becomes obsessed with the case, especially when he starts to suspect that the official police explanation of the crime is not the whole truth. He decides to conduct his own investigation, documenting his findings with a handheld camera. As he dives deeper into the mystery, the protagonist uncovers a series of strange clues and occurrences in his neighborhood. He encounters bizarre characters and experiences increasingly surreal and unsettling events, suggesting a conspiracy or dark darker forces at work. As I said, this film is strange for a couple of reasons. One, there are no names attached to this movie. No credits at all, leaving the creator or creators anonymous. And secondly, it appears that while the narrative is fictional, the actual crime footage and at least some of the interviews are real. That is to say that the creator was just filming and questioning real people. In this way, Murder Death Koreatown is a strange hybrid of a found footage horror film and an actual true crime documentary. There's a lot of really interesting details here, and I would recommend watching Cineflex video on it. It's a great deep dive about the movie. The Last Broadcast this movie is notable for being one of the earliest examples of the found footage genre, predating the Blair Witch Project by a year, and it's often credited with pioneering the use of digital video technology in this style of filmmaking. The story revolves around the mysterious deaths of two cable access television hosts, Stephen and Locus, who go into the Pine Barrens of New Jersey to create a documentary about the legendary Jersey Devil, a mythical creature said to inhabit the area. The film is presented as a documentary by a filmmaker named David Lee, who investigates the circumstances surrounding the host's mysterious disappearance and death. As Lee begins to piece together a narrative through a mix of the host's original footage, interviews, and other media, the film was so ahead of its time that its release was a little tricky. Because the movie was not shot on film stock but was digital, screenings were arranged only to select theaters via satellite streaming. Pretty cool. Okay, moving into tier 5, starting with Trash Humpers. Yeah, we're starting off tier 5 a little weird. Trash Humpers is an experimental film directed by Harmony Korine, who you might know for directing films like Gummo and Kids, but who I know from his bizarre appearances on David Letterman. Anyway, Trash Humpers has a highly unconventional narrative and presentation deliberately crafted to resemble a crudely made home video. The title itself is just a literal description of some of the activities depicted in the film. It follows a small group of elderly looking mask wearing vandals and deviants as they roam the streets at night engaging in bizarre and grotesque behavior including the titular act of humping trash cans the characters are seen laughing maniacally destroying property and interacting with real life passerby who are often unaware that they are a part of a film it's really just a series of loosely connected vignettes rather than a movie and it's not overtly horror but it is really disturbing and strange die book box the story of chris chambers yep we're getting into the how do i make a quick buck for zero dollars area of found footage with this one. The story follows Chris Chambers, who acquires a die book box at an estate sale, unaware of its sinister history and the folklore surrounding the boxes, which in Jewish folklore is a box believed to contain a restless, malicious spirit. Chris begins to experience a series of disturbing and unexplainable events after bringing the box into his home. Nothing too special here. Skinwalker Ranch. Of course, this film is loosely inspired by the real Skinwalker Ranch in Utah, which is infamous for its various reported paranormal phenomena, including UFO sightings, cryptid encounters, and poltergeist activity. The film's narrative centers around the mysterious disappearance of a young boy from the ranch. In response, the ranch owner Hoyt Miller enlists the help of a team of experts, including a scientist, a paranormal researcher, and a security guard to investigate the strange occurrences on his property. As the team furthers the investigation, they encounter a range of inexplicable occurrences that range from disembodied voices, UFOs, cattle mutilation, and some cryptids, much like the actual report from the real life ranch. Home movie. Home movie is structured around the idea of a seemingly normal family's descent into darkness captured through their own home videos. The story centers on the Poe family consisting of David, a pastor, his wife Claire, a psychiatrist, and their 10-year-old twins Jack and Emily. The family lives in a remote house in upstate New York. David and Claire document their family life through a camcorder, capturing birthdays, holidays, and everyday moments. However, the footage gradually reveals a disturbing change in the behavior of the twins. Initially, the twins' actions seem like typical child mischief, but as the film progresses, their behavior becomes increasingly strange and violent. The parents struggle to understand and manage their children's alarming actions, which start with weird stuff like a secret language they communicate in and performing strange rituals, but it quickly escalates to harming animals and worse. Open Water 3, Cage Dive 
Open Water 3 is a sequel in theme only and is also the first in the series to feature the found footage format, so if you're wondering why there's a random sequel crammed in here, that's why. The story follows three friends, Jeff, Megan, and Josh, who are making an audition tape for an extreme reality show. As part of their audition, they plan a cage diving trip to find themselves swimming with great white sharks off the coast of Australia. Their adventure takes a terrifying turn when a massive wave hits their boat, leaving them stranded in the ocean with great white sharks lurking around. Cold Ground Cold Ground follows a pair of journalists, Melissa and David, who venture into the French-Swiss border mountains to investigate a series of mysterious and gruesome animal mutilations. Accompanied by a guide, a scientist, and a local policeman, they set out into the snowy wilderness to uncover the truth behind these incidents. As they venture into the mountains, the group encounters increasingly strange and terrifying phenomena. They face not only the harsh conditions of the wilderness, but also an unseen creature that begins hunting them. The movie isn't completely clear as to what the creatures are that stalk them, but it appears to be werewolves. So. It's kind of a werewolf movie? I don't know. Ghost Watch. Ghost Watch is a notable British television film that aired on BBC One on Halloween night in 1992, and might be one of the greatest pranks ever pulled on television. The program was presented as a live, real-time investigation into paranormal activity, set up as a live broadcast from a house in Norholt, Greater London, where a family has reportedly been experiencing ghostly phenomena. The program is hosted by well-known TV personalities at the time, including Michael Parkinson, Sarah Green, Mike Smith, and Craig Charles, adding to the illusion of authenticity. They conduct interviews, take live phone phone calls from viewers and explore the house to investigate the alleged haunting, centered around the ghostly entity nicknamed Pipes. Although at the start of the program there was a blatant disclaimer warning that it was staged, many viewers missed it and this apparently terrified people across the country who thought it was real, especially since it had the well-known personalities who were completely committed to the bit. Pretty awesome. The Last Horror Movie Speaking of doing it first, we've talked about a couple of movies that follow serial killers from their perspectives, and here's another following the same premise from 2003. The last horror movie is presented through the character of Max Perry, a seemingly ordinary wedding videographer who is, in fact, a serial killer. The film begins as if the viewer has accidentally stumbled upon something they shouldn't be watching. Max has recorded over a typical horror VHS tape with footage of his own, documenting his murders and musing on violence and human nature. Anyway, this one stands out a little from Man Bites Dog or the Poughkeepsie tapes because Max addresses the audience directly, creating a sense of interaction with the viewer. He philosophizes about the nature of violence and society's fascination with horror, all while showcasing his own brutal acts. He even questions the viewer's own morality and reasons for watching such violence, suggesting that the viewer's interest in such horror makes them complicit in the acts depicted. It's a pretty eerie and thought-provoking film about the nature of horror movies and those of us who are attracted to them. Area 407. Area 407 follows a group of people whose plane crashes over a restricted government area. And what is hidden in this area? Dinosaurs. Well, I can't say we've covered that so far on the list. Unfortunately, this one falls way more into the schlock category and is pretty lackluster. I'd recommend instead watching some of the Jurassic Park analog horror videos on YouTube. Alien Abduction, Incident in Lake County. Also known as the McPherson Tape, this is another one that actually predates Blair Witch, releasing in 1998. The story follows the McPherson family who gather for a Thanksgiving dinner at their home in Lake County, Minnesota. The film is supposedly shot by the family's teenage son using a handheld video camera. During dinner, the family experiences a power outage and the men go outside to investigate where they witness a UFO and alien beings. A lot of the film is the drama of the family members and you could say the scenes with the aliens is cheesy looking, but when you're researching an iceberg video at 1am, this one can get you. Not that I would know. The Devil's Doorway the Devil's Doorway is a rare found footage film that takes place in the past, and so far on the iceberg this may be the oldest setting apart from Frankenstein's army, as it takes place in the 60s. It attempts to emulate an early video camera to some extent, but it's still a suspension of disbelief. The story follows two Roman Catholic priests, Father Riley and Father Thornton, who are sent by the Vatican to investigate a reported miracle at the remote Magdalene Laundry, a type of institution used for housing fallen women. These institutions, which were real and operated mostly by religious organizations, have a dark history of abuse and mistreatment. As the priests investigate, they begin to uncover something far more disturbing than they expected. The Dark Tapes. The Dark Tapes, like the VHS series, is an anthology film featuring four stories. The Monster Project. The Monster Project revolves around a group of aspiring filmmakers who decide to create a web series where they interview people claiming to be real-life monsters. For their project, they rent an old mansion and set up interviews with three individuals. Three people claiming to be a skinwalker, a vampire, and a demon-possessed girl. As they begin filming, the interviews take a horrifying turn when the interviewees actually transform into the monsters they were claiming to be. The Frankenstein Theory 
So the premise here is based on the idea that Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is not a fiction, but a factual account. The main character, Jonathan Vankenheim, is a professor who believes that the monster created by Dr. Frankenstein was real and still exists. To validate his claims, Jonathan assembles a documentary film crew and ventures into the remote wilderness of the Arctic Circle, where he believes the creature still resides. It's kind of what you'd expect from there, pretty similar to some of the Bigfoot movies on this list, but with the twist of the Frankenstein monster being the creature, which is interesting. Always Watching a Marble Hornet Story This is a film adaptation of the popular web series Marble Hornets, known for its connection to the Slenderman mythos. The story follows a small news team consisting of Sarah, Milo, and Charlie, who discover a box of videotapes in a house that's up for sale. These tapes contain footage shot by a family who mysteriously disappeared. As the team reviews the footage, they realize that the family was being stalked by a faceless supernatural entity known in the Slenderman lore as the Operator. Although the Operator is technically not Slenderman, this version did shape some of the lore around him. As they review the tapes, they themselves begin being stalked by the operator. Amber Alert this is interesting as it's a movie based on the real life Amber Alert system. It seems like you shouldn't be able to do that, just use the Amber Alert system as the name and focus of a movie, so I'm curious if it was somehow affiliated with the organization at all. Anyway, the story follows two friends, Nate and Samantha, who are in the process of auditioning for a reality TV show. As part of their audition, they are recording their day-to-day -day activities with a video camera. While driving, they notice a car described in an Amber Alert and realize that the driver might be a child abductor with a little girl in the car. Nate and Samantha decide to follow the car and report their findings to the police, hoping to aid in the rescue of the abducted child. As they pursue the car, their involvement escalates from mere observation to a more active and dangerous role. This one is kind of interesting because it's not aliens or Bigfoot or anything. It actually feels like a situation that could really happen. Okay, we're moving into tier six, starting with Bigfoot, The Lost Coast Tapes. This is another Bigfoot movie, kind of. It's actually more based around a supernatural entity stalking a forest connected to ancient Native American lore. The idea is that an investigative journalist, along with his crew, set out to the Northern California wilderness to debunk a Bigfoot hunter's claims about the existence of the creature. The hunter, Drybeck, claims to possess the body of a dead Sasquatch and offers the journalist exclusive proof. But of course, nothing is exactly how it seems. Followed. Followed revolves around Mike, a social media influencer known as Drop the Mic, who is known for his horror-themed vlogs. Seeking to boost his online followers, Following, Mike decides to film his experience staying at the haunted hotel Lennox for three nights. The hotel is infamous for its dark history, including a series of murders and other mysterious occurrences. And of course, as Mike and his crew begin their stay, they encounter various supernatural events that become increasingly terrifying. The elevator in the hotel serves as a supernatural hotspot, and it seems like there are some clear inspirations here from the infamous Eliza Lamb clip. Inner Demons Inner Demons centers around Carson Morris, a teenage girl who was once a straight-A student but has now fallen into a severe drug addiction. Addiction. In an intervention-style approach, her parents enlist the help of a reality TV show that focuses on interventions for addicts because, you know, reality TV always makes things better. The crew of the show begins to document Carson's life, capturing her daily struggles and the efforts to help her. As the filming progresses, Carson begins acting strange and hostile. She claims that she uses drugs to suppress her demonic possession, a claim initially dismissed as a hallucination or excuse for her addiction. However, strange occurrences begin to happen around Carson, suggesting that her claims might be true. It's just another crappy possession movie, but I'll give it some points for the concept of drugs suppressing the entity, which is a unique idea. Hungerford Set in the small English town of Hungerford, the film follows the life of a teenager named Cohen Rosewell. Cohen starts a project to document a week in his life for a college assignment, using a video camera to record his daily experiences. As Cohen films his mundane daily life, unexpected and terrifying events begin to unfold in Hungerford. The town is suddenly and inexplicably overrun by people who are behaving violently and irrationally, attacking others without provocation. It soon becomes apparent that these individuals are not just out of control, but are possessed by an alien force. The Gracefield Incident The plot here revolves around Matthew Donovan, a video game editor who embeds a camera into his prosthetic eye, which is an interesting idea and does away with the traditional cameras while still using a POV perspective. He decides to record a weekend getaway in Gracefield, Quebec with his wife Jessica and a group of friends. The trip is meant to be a relaxing break, but things take a dramatic turn when a meteorite crashes nearby. As they investigate the crash site, strange occurrences begin to happen, leading the group to realize that the meteorite is actually an alien craft. They then must survive an onslaught of aliens. So yeah, another alien movie. The Amityville Haunting 
The Amityville Haunting has no connection to any other Amityville movies other than it's based on the alleged real-life paranormal experiences of the Lutz family in Amityville, New York. But this film itself does not have any direct connection to the actual events of the Lutz family. The story of the Amityville Haunting centers around the Benson family who move into a new home in Amityville unaware of its dark past. The family starts experiencing strange and terrifying phenomena soon after moving in, including eerie noises, ghostly apparitions, and unexplained disturbances. You know, the usual stuff. Butterfly kisses. Butterfly Kisses is a bit of a hidden gem amongst the schlock on this tier. The story revolves around a filmmaker named Gavin York who discovers a cache of old videotapes in his in-law's basement. These tapes contain footage shot by two film students, Sophia and Feldman, a decade earlier. Intrigued, Gavin watches the footage and learns that the students were making a documentary about a local urban legend known as Peeping Tom or Mr. Blink, a mythical figure said to appear at the end of a tunnel in Maryland. According to the legend, if one stares down the tunnel for an hour without blinking, Mr. Blink will manifest and thereafter will get closer and closer every time the person blinks. After attempting to do this themselves and failing, the filmmakers decide to set up a camera using the lens in place of a human eye. And it works. Mr. Blink does appear and since the camera was the eye used, every time they turn the camera on, it's like it's blinking, therefore bringing the entity closer, which is actually a really cool and original idea. But that's only part of the film as the really interesting aspect of the movie is Gavin, who's convinced this footage is real while the rest of the world continues to tell him it's BS. Savage Land Savage Land is set in the small, isolated border town of Sangre de Cristo, Arizona, which becomes the site of a horrific mass murder. In one night, the entire population of the town is brutally killed, with the exception of one man, Francisco Salazar, an undocumented immigrant who is found wandering the streets. Francisco is quickly arrested and charged with the murders based on circumstantial evidence. The core of the narrative revolves around a series of photographs taken by Francisco on the night of the murders. These photographs, the only evidence from the night, slowly reveal a much more terrifying reality reality, that the townspeople may have been victims of something inhuman. This movie is worth it just for the photographs. It's clear that the town is attacked by a variation of zombie or ghoul, and the pictures are really creepy. Nightlight. The story of Nightlight revolves around a group of five teenagers who venture into the Covington Forest, a location notorious for its history of suicides and eerie phenomena. The main character Robin and her friends decide to play a game in the forest at night using flashlights as their primary source of light. The game soon turns sinister as they begin to experience strange and frightening occurrences. As the night progresses, it becomes clear that the forest is haunted by a malevolent force that preys on the fears and vulnerabilities of the teenagers. The Darkest Dawn. The Darkest Dawn is actually a sort of sequel to Hungerford, expanding upon the alien invasion, this time centered around two sisters, Chloe and Sam Murdoch, who are trying to survive in the United Kingdom that has been devastated by the alien invasion. The Bad Ben series. Bad Ben is sort of like the room of found footage movies. It was made entirely by one man, Nigel Bach, on a budget of $300 in his real home. It's in the same vein of paranormal activity, but if the supernatural happened to a disgruntled middle-aged man. In this way, it's absolutely hilarious, and it's really Bach's performance that makes it so great. After the film gained a cult following, Bach embraced the fact that it came off so comical, and the series now has nine films altogether. Ghoul Ghoul follows a group of American filmmakers who travel to Ukraine to make a documentary about the famine that occurred there in the 1930s. During their stay, they hear about a local legend of a cannibalistic entity known as the Ghoul. Intrigued by this folklore, they decide to shift the focus of their documentary to investigate the Ghoul legend instead. They enlist the help of a local woman named Katerina, who claims to have first-hand knowledge of the Ghoul due to her grandmother's experiences. She warns them not to mess around, but they ignore her warning and mockingly summon the disembodied ghost of Andre Chikatilo, a notorious serial killer and cannibal who was active in the late 1970s and 1980s. By the way, this is a real guy, and they begin being hunted by the ghoul. And we've made it to tier seven, starting with Evil Things. Evil Things is about a group of college kids going on a trip and bringing along a video camera to record their journey as they head to a remote cabin in the woods. As they settle into the cabin and begin their celebrations, the group starts experiencing strange things. Initially, these incidents seem like harmless pranks, but they gradually become more eerie and the group realizes they are being stalked by an unseen assailant who seems to know intimate details about their lives. Haunted Hospital the plot revolves around a group of vloggers who decide to spend 24 hours in the Hellstatin Sanatorium to create viral content for their social media channels. The sanatorium has a dark history and is rumored to be haunted, making it a popular spot for thrill seekers and paranormal enthusiasts. The vloggers, seeking to boost their online popularity, gear up with cameras and recording equipment to document their experience. But then nothing happens and they just go home. 
Nah, I'm just kidding. They get attacked by ghosts. What else is new? The Bell Witch Haunting. The Bell Witch Haunting follows a family who become the target of a malevolent spirit in their new home. As strange and frightening events begin to occur, they set up cameras around the house to capture evidence of what they initially believed to be break-ins or pranks. However, the cameras record much more than they expected, capturing a series of unexplained and terrifying paranormal activities. The family learns about the legend of the Bell Witch and realizes that the spirit haunting them is connected to this centuries-old curse. According to the legend, the Bell Witch was a vengeful entity that tormented the Bell family in the early 19th century in Tennessee, the St. Francisville Experiment. This one was released shortly after Blair Witch and follows a group of people investigating an abandoned plantation where murders took place. Unfortunately, this one didn't age well and seems to try to be capitalizing on the success of Blair Witch without any of the prestige. Crow's Nest. Crow's Nest follows five friends who decide to go on a trip to a cabin in the woods to celebrate a birthday. They choose to take a shortcut through a remote area known as Crow's Nest Pass in the Canadian Rockies, but as they travel, they find an animal carcass that seems to have been mutilated and skinned to the bone. The group then encounters an RV that seems to be following them. Initially dismissing it as a coincidence, they soon realize that the driver of the RV is deliberately stalking them. Their road trip quickly turns into a nightmare as they try to escape from the mysterious and increasingly aggressive pursuer. Be my my Cat, a film for Anne. This is another standout, just for being so weird. The story revolves around an aspiring Romanian filmmaker named Adrian, who is obsessed with actress Anne Hathaway. Adrian decides to create a film to convince Hathaway to come to Romania and star in his movie. To do this, he plans to make a low-budget horror film with local actresses, demonstrating how he would direct Hathaway in his dream project. The film documents Adrian's interactions with the actresses he hires as he guides them through various scenes. However, it quickly becomes apparent that Adrian intentions are far darker than they seem. His obsession with Hathaway and his delusions about his filmmaking project lead him down a path of disturbing and violent behavior. As the narrative unfolds, the actresses find themselves in increasingly dangerous situations. Adrian's behavior becomes more erratic and alarming, blurring the lines between acting and reality. It's pretty ballsy to use the name of a real-life actress like that, and the acting here is great, with Andre seeming like a truly delusional psychopath. The Collingswood Story the Collingswood story follows Rebecca and her boyfriend Johnny, who maintain their long-distance relationship through online video chats. And Rebecca has recently moved into a new house in Collingswood, New Jersey. During their video conversation, Johnny becomes curious about Rebecca's new surroundings and the story of her house. They are soon joined in their chats by Vera Madeline, an online psychic, who suggests that the house may have a dark past. As the story unfolds, it becomes clear that Rebecca's house is connected to a series of disturbing events in Collingwood's history. The couple's investigations lead them into a web of supernatural occurrences and eerie discoveries. The reason this one is notable is not just that it was an early 2000s found footage film, but that it used the desktop capture style and webcam idea that we didn't see again for another decade. So it was ahead of its time in these ways. The Presence. The Presence is a German found footage film that follows three friends, Marcus, Lucas, and Rebecca, who decide to explore a reputedly haunted castle in Germany. Intrigued by the legends surrounding the castle, they set out to document their experience, hoping to capture evidence of the supernatural. But of course, as they explore the depths of the castle, the group begins to experience strange and unexplained events. Sounds, whispers, and ghostly apparitions, yada yada yada, you get the idea. Hangar 10 well, Hangar 10 follows three amateur gold prospectors, Gus, Sally, and Jake, who venture into Rendlesham Forest in England hoping to find gold. The forest is famous for an incident in 1980, which is one of the most famous UFO sightings in England. Equipped with metal detectors and a video camera to document their expedition, they hope to uncover some historical artifacts. However, their quest takes an unexpected turn when they start experiencing strange occurrences. Initially, these include interference with their equipment and unexplained lights in the sky, and as the night progresses, this becomes more intense and terrifying. Linopolis. Linopolis is fairly unique story-wise. It follows two documentary filmmakers who stumble upon a conspiracy involving a secret society, time travel, and a mysterious city on the moon called Lunopolis. Their discovery begins when they find a strange device and a series of bizarre recordings leading them to investigate further. They eventually uncovered the existence of Lunarians, a group of people who live on the moon and have advanced technology that allows them to travel through time. The filmmakers learn about the Lunarians' influence on Earth's history and their their efforts to manipulate events to suit their agenda. WNUF Halloween Special. This one is unique in its presentation, cleverly mimicking the style of late night local TV shows broadcast from the late 1980s, complete with period appropriate commercials and VHS tape artifacts. And I have to say, they've done really well in the effects here. Set on Halloween night in 1987, the film is framed as a live news broadcast from the fictional WNUF TV station. The host, Frank Stewart, along with a team of paranormal investigators and a priest, is conducting a live investigation of the Weber House, which is in 
infamous in the local community for being haunted due to a series of gruesome murders that took place there years earlier. I can't help but think of Ghost Watch, the actual live broadcast, and wonder if it was part of the inspiration here. A cult. A cult was written and directed by the same director of Noroi, The Curse, and is a very similar movie as it's in the same documentary style. It follows a documentary filmmaker, Koji, as he begins to document the aftermath of a mass stabbing in which the culprit killed two people and injured more. One of the survivors, a man named Ino, had a strange cult-like symbol carved into his back by the stabber. He says he's thankful as in the aftermath he has begun experiencing miracles, including UFO sightings, hearing voices, and witnessing telekinetic phenomenon. Ino further tells the crew that as he was being stabbed, he was told, it's your turn, which Eno takes as an imperative to perform a ceremony mandated by God, which he believes was the motive behind the mass stabbing. If you're in the mood for a found footage film with that Japanese horror flair, check this one out. Webcast. Webcast centers around Chloe and Ed, two young filmmakers who are making a documentary for their university project. Chloe decides to focus on her family's history, particularly her aunt, who mysteriously vanished when she was a child. The project leads Chloe to explore the seemingly ordinary neighborhood where her grandparents live. As they dig deeper, Chloe and Ed begin to uncover unsettling secrets about the neighborhood. Things take a turn when they suspect that the neighbors might actually be involved in a cult and could be linked to her aunt's disappearance. Apocalypse Cult Speaking of cults, Apocalypse Cult follows Jody Black, a journalist, and her cameraman Kevin as they embark on a project to document a secretive cult located in a remote part of the Australian countryside. The cult, led by a charismatic and enigmatic figure named Michael Godson, claims to be preparing for an impending apocalypse. Jody and Kevin are allowed to film the cult's daily activities and interview its members, who all display a devout and unquestioning loyalty to Godson. As the journalists spend more time in the cult, they begin to witness increasingly bizarre and alarming rituals and teachings, and they become entangled in the cult web of psychological manipulation and control. All right, moving into tier eight, starting with Unaware. Unaware is an alien invasion movie and not a very good one. I've heard people call it a watered down version of the McPherson tape, and I think this is because the aliens in Unaware seem to be the classic big eyed, round headed aliens we all know and love. The problem is you never really see them other than a few short moments, and the rest of the film is pretty boring. I know you could say that for a lot of the found footage movies on here, but trust me, the internet is not a fan of this one, especially since the creators refuse to credit the actors because they insist that it's a real tape, which is just straight up silly. Population Zero. This one is not really all that scary, but it has a unique focus, so I wanted to mention it. The premise of Population Zero centers around a mysterious triple homicide in Yellowstone National Park. The film is presented through the perspective of a filmmaker who becomes intrigued by the legal loophole that allowed the murderer to walk free without any charges. This loophole is based on the real-life legal concept known as the Zone of Death, a small area in Yellowstone where theoretically someone could commit a crime without being prosecuted due to jurisdictional issues. It's a cool premise and the fact that this is a real theoretical legal loophole is pretty interesting. Sanatorium Sanatorium is yet another supernatural found footage movie where a team of ghost hunters investigate a haunted building, and guess what you guys, it's haunted. It's got all the typical scares you'd expect here. Moving on. Blackwater Vampire You know, surprisingly there haven't been that many vampire movies on this iceberg yet. Well, Blackwater Vampire is about a documentary filmmaker, Danielle, and her crew who embark on a journey to uncover the truth behind a series of brutal murders in the remote woods of Blackwater. The murders in which the victims are left drained of blood with strange bite marks have been dubbed the Blackwater Vampire Killings by the media. It's no big spoiler to say that it is in fact a vampire, and at least we get to see some glimpses of it. Death of a Vlogger In Death of a Vlogger, Graham, an aspiring vlogger, begins to experience a strange occurrence in his flat. Hoping to boost his online following, Graham decides to capitalize on this and starts documenting the supposed paranormal activities, sharing them on his vlog. His videos quickly go viral, catapulting him into internet fame. As Graham continues creating content about the hauntings, he enlists the help of Aaron, a paranormal investigator, and Alice, a skeptical journalist. Journalist. The trio embarks on the investigation to uncover the truth behind the occurrences, with Graham's viewership growing exponentially. It's really more of a film dealing with Graham's mental health and the paranormal elements being a representation of that. 6 minus 5 equals 2. 
That is the title of this film, and it may well be the dumbest on the chart. I can't find an explanation for it either, other than some theories like 6 minus 5 equals 2 refers to the group's reduction from 6 friends to 5 and then ultimately to 2 as the narrative unfolds. I don't know. I think it was just being provocative, and hey, it worked because I was drawn to it on the chart, I have to admit. Anyway, this is an Indian found footage movie based on the supposed real life experiences of six friends who go on a trek to the Western Ghats, a mountain range in India. It starts with the discovery of a camera in the forest, which contains footage shot from the group during their trek. As the footage is played back, it chronicles the journey of the friends as they embark on what you'd expect to be an adventurer's trek. However, their adventure turns into a nightmare as they begin to experience strange and terrifying things in the wilderness. Lucky Bastard Lucky Bastard is an interesting one, not just for its concept, but the fact that it's the only one on the list so far with an NC-17 rating. It's about the owner of an adult website, Lucky Bastard, which runs a contest where a fan, or Lucky Bastard, gets to be the featured talent in a scene with a famous adult actress, Ashley Saint. So the Lucky Bastard is Dave, a seemingly normal guy, but once shooting begins, things go wrong, and Dave begins to reveal he may actually be obsessed with Ashley, and this all culminates when Dave goes berserk and begins killing the crew, leading to a final confrontation with Ashley. The fear footage. The premise of the fear footage centers around a mysterious VHS tape. The film opens with a police officer responding to a call about a house in Maryland that was demolished yet has inexplicably reappeared overnight. The officer investigates the house and the footage that comprises most of the film is what he supposedly recorded with his body camera. Inside the house, the officer finds a VHS tape labeled the fear footage and a note instructing him to watch. As he views the tape, it shows a series of horrifying clips, each depicting different terrifying scenarios ranging from supernatural occurrences occurrences to intense psychological horror similar to the VHS series. 3.15 AM 315 follows a couple, Celine and her husband, who decide to document their everyday life for a year after Celine is diagnosed with a serious illness. Their project takes a turn when Celine begins to experience unexplained phenomena at night, particularly around 315 AM, which is often referred to as the witching hour in folklore, a time associated with supernatural occurrences. As these terrifying events become more frequent and intense, her husband becomes increasingly concerned about Celine's well-being. The couple starts to believe that Celine might be the target of a demonic entity and they seek help from paranormal experts. Long Pigs Another film in the vein of Man Bites Dog, Long Pigs is a horror comedy following the life of a serial killer, or in this case, more specifically, a cannibal, as he goes through his day-to-day -day life, including finding, killing, cooking, and eating his targets. It's very creepy, but the performance of Anthony Alviano, who plays the hilariously creepy part of the cannibal, is great. I think out of all the follow a serial killer themed found footage movies on this iceberg, this might be my favorite. Rorschach. Rorschach centers around two friends, Jake and Chris, who decide to investigate paranormal normal activities as a way to distract themselves from their personal problems. Jake recently lost his wife and Chris is going through a difficult time. They choose to explore an old supposedly haunted house where Jake used to live. The house has a reputation for being the site of unexplained occurrences and the friends set out to capture evidence of ghosts or supernatural entities. They set up cameras and recording equipment through the house hoping to document their findings. This one is more low budget than a lot of the other paranormal movies we've covered and in this way it actually feels pretty eerie with a smaller scale and no score. A Atrocious. Atrocious unfolds with the Quintanilla family, consisting of teenagers Christian and Julie along with their parents traveling to their old family house in the countryside in Spain. Christian and Julie, intrigued by local urban legend about a girl named Melinda who got lost in a labyrinth near their home, decide to investigate and document their findings for a school project. Initially, their investigation seems harmless, but strange occurrences soon begin to happen. Unexplained noises, eerie discoveries in the labyrinth, and the feeling of being watched start to unnerve the siblings and their family. Gags the Clown if you guys remember a few years ago, there was a lot of viral videos going around of people in clown suits walking around at night, and in some cases terrorizing people. Well, this film is based around that concept. The narrative is presented through multiple perspectives, including a local news reporter, a group of high school students, a conspiracy theorist, and a pair of police officers, all of whom are trying to understand and document the bizarre events unfolding in their city. The central figure is Gags, a silent clown who appears at night carrying black balloons, instigating both curiosity and fear among the residents. Pretty Dead Pretty Dead has a fairly unique premise. It follows Regina Stevens, an average girl, and tells she begins having an appetite for human flesh. She kills and cannibalizes four men before she's arrested. While waiting trial, she tries to convince everyone that she is actually turning into a real-life zombie. It's a cool concept and done pretty well. Okay, we are on to Tier 9, starting with Eyes in the Dark. 
Eyes in the Dark follows a group of college friends who embark on a hiking trip in the Pacific Northwest. The story is centered around the group's encounter with an unseen creature in the woods. It's another one of those where the creature is never really seen and it's left ambiguous, but I've seen theories ranging from Bigfoot to Dogman. House with a Hundred Eyes This is yet another horror comedy from the perspective of serial killers, although this one follows a killer couple, Ed and Susan, who aspire to be the ultimate serial killers and filmmakers. They plan to create what they believe to be a masterpiece in the snuff film genre, aiming to brutally murder three people on camera while capturing the entire process with numerous cameras installed in their house, which they refer to as the house with a hundred eyes. The Lost Footage of Leah Sullivan This film follows an aspiring journalist, Leah Sullivan, who uncovers a cold case about a brutal murder that occurred in the small town of Slatersville. Leah decides to make a documentary about the unsolved case and returns to her hometown to investigate. As she begins to dig into the town's past, interviewing locals and gathering information about the murder, she teams up with Patrick, a police officer who provides access to the original case files. As they dive deeper, they uncover disturbing secrets and evidence that suggests a cover-up. The more Leah investigates, the more she realizes that there may be a darker, more supernatural element to the murder. The Cannibal in the Jungle This is a horror mockumentary that presents itself as a factual account of the experiences of an American scientist, Dr. Timothy Darrow, in Indonesia. In 1977, Dr. Darrow leads an expedition to Indonesia to study rare birds, but the trip takes a terrifying turn when two of his fellow explorers are found brutally murdered. Darrow is the only survivor and is subsequently accused and convicted of their murders with the suggestion that he resorted to cannibalism. The film combines interviews, archival footage, and dramatic reenactments to recount Darrow's story and the circumstances that led to his conviction. However, it introduces a twist. Darrow claims that his companions were actually killed by a tribe of humanoid creatures which he calls hominid cryptids, suggesting an undiscovered species in the jungles of Indonesia. The weird thing about this movie is how many people think that it's legit. I think because it doesn't seem too far off of something you'd see on the sci-fi channel or something, and it was actually released on Animal Planet, so I guess that contributed to it. There Are Monsters There Are Monsters is a horror film set in an apocalyptic world gradually overtaken by creatures indistinguishable from humans. The story centers on a group of graduate film students on a work-related road trip who inadvertently discover evidence of these sinister doppelgangers. As they document their journey, the world around them transforms in disturbing ways, captured through their cameras. It's based off of a 10-minute short with the same title, and it's a cool concept about a secret invasion. Sorgoy Prokov, aka Descent into Madness, is a found footage horror film that follows the story of a young man named Sorgoy Prokov, a fictional Eastern European character who travels to America with high hopes and dreams of success and happiness, and gradual descent into madness and violence. He arrives in the United States full of optimism, intending to live the American dream. However, he quickly finds himself faced with harsh realities and struggles, including cultural barriers, financial difficulties, and social isolation. The film captures his transformation as he becomes increasingly unstable and delusional. The audience witnesses this descent into darkness as he becomes involved in criminal activities and violent behavior. I Am Alone I Am Alone has kind of a cool setup for a zombie movie. It follows Jacob Fitz, a reality TV show host, who finds himself in the middle of a zombie outbreak while filming an episode in the remote Colorado wilderness. As the outbreak rapidly spreads, Jacob becomes stranded and is forced to record his survival efforts and experiences while being pursued by the infected. Meanwhile, the footage is intercut with the perspective of Mason, Jacob's producer, who is searching for him after the outbreak. A record of sweet murder. The film follows a journalist and her cameraman who receive a strange invitation from a childhood friend. This friend, however, is now a wanted serial killer responsible for 18 murders and claims that he was instructed by God to commit the killings to save the soul of a childhood friend who died tragically. He promises that his 27th victim will be his last and invites the journalist to document this final act, believing that it will bring salvation. Accompanied by her cameraman, she decides to meet the killer at an abandoned factory where he's hiding. The film captures their intense and unsettling encounter as the killer explains his twisted logic and the reasons behind his murderous spree. He believes that by completing the divine command, he can bring the dead back to life. Shooting the Warwicks Also known as Reality Show, this is a dark comedy and satire film focusing on a fictional reality TV show called The Warwicks. The film revolves around the Warwick family who are unknowingly the stars of a reality show. The twist is that the family is completely unaware that their home has been rigged with numerous hidden cameras and that they're being broadcasted 24-7 to the nation. The creator and director of the show manipulates the family's environment and situations to create drama and boost ratings, showcasing the invasive and unethical practices often associated with reality TV. As as the show progresses, the family begins to unravel and things escalate to a violent degree. Night Shot 
Night Shot is another paranormal type movie where a young vlogger and her cameraman venture deep into the bowels of an abandoned hospital in the forest. But I will give it credit because the entire thing was filmed in one shot. I think being the only one on the iceberg to pull that off. Strawberry Flavored Plastic this film follows two documentary filmmakers, Errol and Ellis, who decide to make a film about a recently released criminal, Noel Rose, who claims to be a reformed man. As Errol and Ellis document Noel's life post-release, they are drawn into his twisted world. Noel, charismatic and articulate, gradually reveals his dark past as a serial killer. The filmmakers become conflicted as they grapple with the ethical dilemmas of their project, torn between their fascination with Noel's character and the horror of his crimes. Survive the Hollow Shoals as a self-proclaimed survivalist, Zack sets out to the wilderness of the Georgia Shoals to prove his survival skills for 60 days, but food and shelter end up being the least of his worries when he begins to encounter strange noises and disturbances. Not much to say about this one other than it's interesting that it starts with only one person, where most of these movies start with at least three. Real. Real revolves around Todd Smith, a YouTuber known for a show about found footage films, and his fan, Slasher Victim 666, who has a history of making disturbingly realistic found footage films. Slash Victim 666, intrigued by their shared hometown connection with Todd, decides they were meant to work together. The film is composed of variously sourced footage edited together by Slasher Victim 666, introducing clips of Todd being unknowingly stalked, scenes from his favorite films, and his own home movies. The blend creates an unsettling portrait of two troubled individuals whose paths are fatefully intertwined. The last part of the film dramatically shifts in tone, revealing a more disturbing and violent nature, and I will add the practical effects are pretty good here, and therefore gruesome. Cruiser. Cruiser follows a cop who basically just snaps and goes on a killing spree and records the whole thing on his body cam in the process. Alright, the final tier. Tier 10. Starting with Seekers. Okay, we are truly in the bottom tier here because I can't find dick on these movies. But as far as I can tell, Seekers centers on a group of four friends and their cameraman as they embark on an expedition in Poland's dense forest. Their adventure is driven by the goal of creating a documentary about geocaching, their favorite pastime, which involves a contemporary style of treasure hunting. But of course, they begin being hunted by an unknown creature. Invisible 2, Chasing the Ghost Sound. Invisible 2 centers around a woman living alone after the tragic loss of her husband and sister. In her solitude, she starts hearing the voice of her late sister, around the house, which leads her to seek answers by enlisting the help of a television program dedicated to investigating supernatural events. A reality TV crew visits her in a remote inn in the snowy mountains of Korea. It's a typical found footage haunted house film here, but I will say it's only 40 minutes long and does have a few frights. August Underground Okay, we are at the most depraved part of the iceberg. These last few entries are truly disturbing. The August Underground series is a collection of horror films known for their extreme content and realistic portrayal of serial killers. The series consists of three films, each presented in a found footage style, and is notorious for its graphic depictions of violence and torture. Guinea Pig Devil's Experiment. Staying on the torture theme, Guinea Pig Devil's Experiment is a really disturbing movie. I'm not even sure if you can call it a movie, honestly. It's more like a 43 minute showcase of torture and some amazing special effects. The entire thing is literally just three guys torturing a woman in various ways. It's loosely structured around title cards introducing each new act of torture. These range from physical assaults like hitting and kicking to more gruesome acts. I'm not super squeamish, but man, some of the sequences in this movie I was basically watching through my fingers. The effects here are incredible and look really realistic. The movie, along with much of the other guinea pig series, kind of strikes a bit of debate as to what is considered a real film and what level of depravity should be accepted as art. It's a tough one for me because on one hand, I didn't enjoy watching this and wouldn't recommend anyone does. It doesn't feel like a movie, but more of an experiment in video. That being said, I can't help but respect the special effects here because they are insanely good, especially for a low-budget project like this. I mean, these are Tom Savini level and I don't say that lightly. Well, while we're here, we might as well do Guinea Pig 2, Flowers of Flesh and Blood. This is very similar to The Devil's Experiment in that it's arguable as to whether you can really consider it a film because it's literally just a man torturing a woman for 40 minutes. And of course it's conveyed as if it's a real snuff film. In a lot of ways this is even more disturbing than The Devil's Experiment because he doesn't just torture her, he dismembers her limb by limb. She's tied up and gagged, unable to get free before she sees her captor, a dude wearing a samurai helmet for whatever reason. He then injects her with some kind of serum that seems to make her not feel pain or at least mellows her out or something. After a little 
spiel about how he finds pain and blood beautiful, he pulls out a knife and begins chopping her up. Once again, the effects are really good here. You mix that with some gruesome sound effects and the lack of music, and it really is uncomfortable to watch. So that's Kidding Pig 2, Flowers of Flesh and Blood. It's just straight up torture. There's not really a story. And like I said, for Devil's Experiment, it's really, if anything, a showcase of some amazing blood and gore effects, which is probably the best thing I can say about it. In fact, back when this was passed around on tape, it was so convincing people thought it was legit. Famously, actor Charlie Sheen called the FBI after watching Flowers of Flesh and Blood, thinking it was a real snuff film. Crazy. Hate crime. With a name like that, of course this one's going to be grimy. Well, it's another torture flick here. Hate crime revolves around a Jewish family celebrating a birthday at their home when their evening is brutally interrupted by a group of neo-Nazi intruders, leading them to a night of extreme terror and violence. The entire ordeal is captured on video as the attackers film their heinous acts. Well, I think I can safely say I never want to watch another found footage film again, but there were some great finds on this chart, and I plan on making a video talking about the hidden gems I found on this iceberg on Patreon. That'll hopefully be up in the next couple days, depending on when this comes out. Speaking of Patreon, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons, Naomi Romero, Soma, Krusty the Crab, One Group, Ali Morgan, Laz Wishgender, Malediction, Hunter Piva, Tora, Heather M, Creepy Pasta Cube, A Slightly Bigger Ant, and Ricky Shadow. You guys are awesome. If you want a shout out like that at the end of every video, as well as bonus videos and a grief sticker, consider joining the Patreon. But that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. This is Grief Speaking. Goodbye, friends.